talking a little more about the assumptions that we've already talked about a little bit. Uh, CSB appropriation reduction. Uh, we took a pretty simple approach here. We basically looked at how much we project spending on the newly enrolled population for the specific category of behavioral health services that CSBs provide. And we assumed that 25% of that spending would supplant direct appropriation that goes to the CSBs. Uh, we can certainly, you know, between now and the next time we revise the estimate, we can certainly discuss that further, but that is the assumption that we use. The Department of Corrections, as I said, is a little more straightforward. We know what they spend. We have a pretty good estimate of what we would spend on the same uh, set of services. Uh, and, and so it, it's really a question of going from 100% general fund support to 100% to 90% federal fund support. Uh, I hope you guys go back through these numbers and take a close look at that because I think no action is uh, it's not real easy to take 100% general funds because uh, there's been some tension on the funding for the inmate health care, uh, particularly when you go to the hospital, particularly the providers to take Medicaid rates right off the bat. That uh, there's a problem there, so I'm mean, very well to really just look at that. I mean, uh, off the surface, it's down to them, but I think we need to get into that. In terms of indigent care at the teaching hospitals, we assumed a 50% reduction, uh, which we felt was, was probably a reasonably conservative approach. Uh, just one more slide, and this is, uh, we've been talking about the 2012 estimates. Uh, this is the second estimate we've done. We did an estimate in 2010, uh, and then we did an updated estimate in 2012. And as you can see, the numbers are pretty different. Uh, in 2010, we estimated about $2 billion cost uh, to the general fund. Now we're saying $137 million. Uh, this, uh, this chart lists the major components of the estimate and indicates in two columns uh, with what the different estimates, what the different estimates did. In other words, uh, woodwork costs, both estimates included a uh, figure for the woodwork costs. They, they weren't necessarily the same, but they both at least addressed it. Going down uh, a couple of lines, ACA insurance tax is a good example. In 2010, we didn't know, I'm not sure any state knew that the provision in the ACA that imposes an insurance tax was going to incur a cost for Medicaid. We, that surfaced between 2010 and 2012, and, and so we now reflect that. Um, another important line is uh, Medicaid expansion costs, and the line right below it, number of people uh, who would enroll. In 2010, we, we basically assumed a 100% uh, take-up rate. We assumed anyone, anyone who was eligible would enroll. We're now using a percentage take-up rate that we believe is more realistic, and so we're showing a lot fewer people enrolling in Medicaid, and that accounts for a big share of the difference. Uh, and the other three items uh, that make a very big difference are the behavioral health savings, the inmate savings, and the indigent care savings. Those three items together account for about $1.2 billion of the, what is about a $2 billion difference between our 2010 estimate and this estimate. And most of what's left is accounted for by, by use of a take-up rate rather than assuming 100% and we can certainly provide the details on that. So, again. Very quickly, uh, uh, I've been asked by a few people, and I don't have the answer to it. If you sell a home today, is 3% of the sale of that home goes to Nikki on the federal tax? Yeah, it's a check. Yeah, it's a check. So it is above $4 million. So it's on the capital. 